Hello friends and strangers! Just last week marks the one year anniversary of me starting my job. Can I get a round of applause? Thank you. Yes, it's been over a year since I graduated and left education and entered the world of work. I'm not gonna lie, the year has flown by. Once you settle down into a routine of working, you find that the days just tend to go. You get up, you go to work, you come home, you sleep, you get up, you go to work, you come home, you sleep. And now here we are. Ever since I started my job, I have wanted to make this video. But now that a year has passed and I finally feel like I've settled in at my job, I think it's time to make it. Leaving university and starting full-time work is a huge change and it takes a lot of getting used to. And it's not easy to get used to either. In fact, I honestly believe that my struggle to adapt to the world of work has partly contributed to my anxiety and my depression. And it's only now that things feel a little more balanced out that I feel able to talk about this. Some of you may be watching this and you're either about to finish your education or perhaps you've already finished it and you're just about to start work. And you're probably thinking, oh God, what horrors is she about to tell us about? It's not really a warning. Don't worry, it's not that bad. I just wish that somebody had been there to tell me these things. So consider yourself lucky. So without further Further ado, here are the things I have observed since leaving university and starting work. Number one, nothing I did in all those years of education could prepare me for full-time work. If anything, I was probably more prepared for work before college and university than I was afterwards. Let me explain. When I went to primary and secondary school, from the ages 5 to about 16, I was in school every day, Monday to Friday, from 9am till 3pm. You had a routine, it was exactly the same every single day, every single week. That timetable was probably the closest thing to preparing me for the workplace. But it doesn't last. After secondary school, I then went to college, and at college, no two days were the same. You might have a free period here, you might have a free period over there. Your start and finish times are always changing, and then you go to university and suddenly you find yourself going from six hours of solid teaching every single day to one or two hours a day, if that. Not to mention constant days that don't have any lectures in them. When I was at university it was considered extremely unlucky if you had more than two hours of lectures a day. It was also considered extremely unlucky if you had more than one lecture each week that started at 9am. Fast forward to where I am now Every day starts at 9am. And forget one or two hours of work each day, I'm at work from 9 till 5. That is 8 hours every day, that is 40 hours every week. And sure, I know that when you're not in lectures at university, you're supposed to be studying, but come on. Nobody does 40 hours of studying every week. Unless you're a massive nerd and you do, and in which case, good for you. You're gonna go far in life. I suppose on the flip side of things, when you're at work, everything finishes at the end of the day. When you're a student, however, there is no off switch. I remember I might have two hours of lectures on a Wednesday, but then I'd go home and study until about two o'clock in the morning. There was never a moment when I didn't feel like I didn't have to study. Whenever I had fun, there was always a little voice in the back of my head that was like, shouldn't you be reading some kind of textbook right now? Whereas now that I'm in work, when I come home, I can just chill. I finish at 5 and I get home and then I start thinking about bed at about 9pm which means I have about 4 hours to try and fit in the rest of my life. And you know me, I like to do everything. I'm learning the ukulele, I'm trying to teach myself new languages, I go to trampolining and pole dancing and I'm now trying to fit all of those things in to the small amount of time that I am given between work days. It's not easy and I've just made it harder for myself because next year I am going to be doing my L. PC, which is the legal practice course. So now, not only do I have to balance work and all of the list of activities that I just previously mentioned, I also have to fit in multiple hours of studying. But hey, at least I'm gonna be a student again. Hello, student discount! And I've also got to fit in YouTube as well. Make the most of me while you can, because in two years time, I will probably be dead. The stress will have probably killed me. Thinking of the time that you spend at work and the time that you spend off work, Let's talk about holidays. Now, when you're in school, you get two weeks at Christmas, two weeks at Easter, half term and six weeks off for summer. When you go to university, 
everything doubles. You get four weeks off for Christmas, four weeks off for Easter, the summer holidays are like 10 to 12 weeks long and it's blissful. Then you start work and depending on how generous your employer is, you can kiss those long summer holidays goodbye. At my job, I get 28 days a year. That's including bank holidays. 28 days. I mean, of course, that's not taking into account weekends, but still. And you have to plan it in advance. You have to ask your boss's permission. You have to make sure none of your other colleagues are going away at the same time. I currently have three days of holiday left to book, but I've been told to save them by my boss because I may or may not get a Christmas holiday otherwise. That's right, not even Christmas is sacred anymore. My next holiday is going to be in September. My last holiday was in February. By the time I go on holiday, it will be seven months since I last took a break from work. And oh my god, I am exhausted. I need a holiday so badly right now. Just hang in there for a few more weeks, Katie. And they're always complaining like, oh, I have so much work to do. And I'm like, really? Do you? And they think it's so unfair that they only get six weeks of summer. One of the girls said to me, are you looking forward to this summer? And I was like, girl? I don't even get a summer, not really. And she was like, but you earn money, right? So you can travel wherever you want. And I was like, yes, but I only get 28 days a year to actually do any traveling. Before you have a job, you have all this time, but you have no money to do anything with it. Now that I'm at work, I have all this money, but I have no time to do anything with it. Another difference between the world of work and the world of education is who you are doing the work for. When you're studying, you are working for yourself, for your grades, so that you can get a job. But when you're at work, sure, you're, you know, trying to work for yourself so that you can earn money and then maybe afford a place to live, although that's very unlikely these days given that housing prices are ridiculously high but you're also working for other people. You're working for your company because you want your company to look good. And you're also working to help your customers or your clients or whoever it is that you're serving. And I don't know about you, but I feel like that adds a lot of pressure onto your job. Like when you're in school, if you screw up your grades, no one else is really affected by it except you. But at work, if you screw up, I don't even want to think about the consequences. And last but not least, probably the thing that I miss the most about being in education, particularly university, where you can wear your own clothes, is the dress code. Sure, when you're at school, you have to wear a uniform, but once you get to university, you can pretty much just wear pyjamas anywhere. People turned up to lectures wearing the outfits that they wore clubbing the previous night. I spent the majority of my last year wearing sweatpants, and it was gloriously comfortable. Unfortunately, at my job, I can no longer do that. While they're not the strictest company when it comes to dress codes, I'm still expected to look smart. I now have two wardrobes in this house, one that contains my normal clothes, you know, t-shirts that have dogs and Harry Potter on them, which sadly I can't wear to work, and then in the other wardrobe I have all of my work stuff. And it feels almost pointless keeping this wardrobe full of clothes that five days a week I cannot wear, but when the weekend rolls around, it's totally worth it. So there we go. Those are the things that I have observed since leaving university and starting work. Can I go back to being a student, please? To be honest, although it was a struggle to get used to being at work, I work with a group of people who are extremely fun to be around. The work is interesting and is going to help me in my future career, wherever that may take me. And of course, it's good to be earning money. Don't be scared when it comes to finding your first job. Or don't worry if you are scared, it's perfectly natural. It may take you some time to get used to it, or maybe you'll find it even better than education. Either way, good luck to all of you who are starting a job soon. You got this. And if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments below. Or if you are a student, let me know about what you hate about being a student. Alright guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye!